Hello, today I'm at Earls Cone Airfield in Essex because I'm starting my tailwheel training. And I have the perfect aircraft to do it in, a World War II Piper L4 Cub, known as Miss Nora. The United States Army is now using a midget aircraft known as the Piper Cub and nicknamed the Flying Jeep. Costing only 130 pounds, it has a 65 horsepower engine, a speed of about 90, and can take off like a boy's kite. The Piper Cub was used extensively by the Americans in the war for reconnaissance, transport and medical evacuation. Using a road for an airfield. They're so easy to fly that a couple of kids hopped into one the other day and took off. The would-be pilot landed in the arms of the law. Under the patient instruction of Anglian warbirds, I'm aiming to learn the basics of tailwheel flying in the Cub before transitioning to the T6 Harvard. If I succeed, I'll get to fly the Harvard by the famous White Cliffs of Dover past the Battle of Britain Memorial. You can follow my training in a series of special episodes. My instructor is ace display pilot Nigel Wilson. Nigel, what do I need to know in order to fly a tailwheel aircraft? Okay, there's two main things that you just must not forget okay the first one is the tail is always trying to overtake the nose when it's on the ground and the second thing is is you never ever stop flying the aeroplane until you come to a standstill Nigel listed the five main reasons why a tail dragger can be more awkward to fly than a nose wheel aeroplane the propeller prop wash uh, the torque from the engine a crosswind if there is one, uh, gyroscopics to do with propeller when it uh, changes from being at an angle with the tail on the ground to being perpendicular and also something called p-factor or asymmetric blade effect. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> alright, this is, this is going to be a long day I think. I have a lot to learn and after a swift briefing in the classroom I strap in and we get the motor running. Okay and contact. Contact. First come ready, Golf Brother Echo Charlie November. Ready check 122 decimal 430. Golf Brother Echo Charlie November, good afternoon. How's it going, your pies? Flash your message, please. Uh, Golf Brother Echo Charlie November, request airfield information for the circuit, uh, Wilson Plus One. Go Charlie November, Roger 24 with a left hand circuit, QFE is 1001. Uh, two for left hand QFE 1001, Golf Charlie November. So we'll go to the left first. That's it, and a little bit of break as well, oh. and you get to feel it, yeah? Yeah. That's it. And we'll go around the back of these aeroplanes. Well, I'm going to be rubbish at this. <laughs> uh, taxiing then, uh, how do we do that in the tailwheel? OK, taxiing, obviously you've got limited forward visibility, so you still need to clear the way ahead. So when we move the aircraft to the left or move the nose to the left, we should be looking at the right-hand side of the aeroplane to making sure the way ahead there is clear. And then you reverse it, so we taxi to the right, and then you're looking at the left-hand side of the aeroplane to make sure the way there is clear. So you're the weaving all the way down the taxiway. Weaving all the way down, but importantly making sure we overlap the bit in the middle so there's no blind spot in the middle. This is not normal. <laughs> And the secret is to make sure you are in charge of the aircraft and don't let it run away with you. It starts to do that, slow down. That's it, you got it. It's learning to taxi all over again. It is. So we can go onto the grass over here on the left. Just slow down a little. Now put the brake on and add some power and left rudder. There oh, you wow. go, all right? Okay. So that's what you can do with... There we go. Okay. OK, so brakes on. Brakes on. So T's and P's over on the right here, they're all within limits. So let's go to 1700 RPM. Kick back all the way. And try the mags. OK, right. Left. Back to both. Yep, and carb heat. Carb heat. Back to cold. Cold. OK, so T's and P's are still OK. Gently down to idle, but don't let it stop. <laughs> uh, uh. Down to the left, yeah? Yeah, whichever way you like. 
So this time you're into the wind, so it's more difficult to get the tail round. So use the brake. Right, Golf Channel November is ready for departure. Carry Golf on. Golf Channel November, Roger. Surface wind zero, zero. Correction two zero zero degrees eight knots. Golf Channel November. Right, it's up to you. You can either take the hard or the grass. Try for the grass. Shall we? So round you go left. Good, okay. Happy? Oh, well, we'll go that far. <laughs> Wind is slightly from the left, so you want a bit of left cross. Yeah, a little bit from the left, okay, not too much though. Right. Okay, so when you're ready then, so heels on the floor, and let's open the throttle just to get moving forwards. And we want to stick back, don't we? Let's stick all the way back, yep. Just start to move forwards. Once we're definitely in a straight line, let's go for all of the power now. Off you go, full power. That's it. And now move the stick forwards so you can see where you're going. Feed off the brakes, move the stick forwards. Oh. Uh, stick forwards, go on. That's it. Now just use your toes. Oh my god, hang on. Well, <laughs> That's fine. It's because my feet are not quite right. Left a bit, mind the runway lights. OK, up we go. There you go. The problem I had there, steering on the runway, was getting a feel for those rudder pedals. I'm used to toe brakes. The Cub has heel brakes. So here is what I'm talking about with the uh, rudder pedals. You've got the rudder pedal here, which is which I'm operating from the back seat, and then below it here, you've got the heel brakes. And uh, it's very, very difficult to position your foot so that you're not applying the heel brakes when you're steering with the rudder. So that's something I'm still still getting used to even now. And I really did come close to those runway lights. Just raise nose a little bit. That's it, that's the climb attitude, okay? Yeah. That's 65. The T's and P's are all good. Airspeed's good, RPM is good. You want a little bit of left rudder, just a little bit, that's it. A very, very gently round the corner to the left. We're only going to do a circuit at 800 feet, otherwise we'll be still next year. That's it, let's go wings level there, just allow for the wind a little bit. Raise nose a little bit more. So RPM's good, P's and P's are still good. All the older aeroplanes, you just need to keep an eye on things you know, a little bit more often. Now, when you're ready, round to the left again. And straight ahead, that's fine. And we can level off whenever you like. Right. About 2,200 RPM. So your feet need to be sort of almost slanted forward slightly yeah. so you can press the rudders without yeah, yeah. doing that the brake. That was break. the problem in the take yeah. I ended up with my feet off the floor That's really fine. and it was uh, very difficult to control. Okay. Right, off Charlie November downwind. Okay, so car peak to hot. Got Charlie November, Roger. Car peak hot. Brakes off. Brakes off. Pressure under our heels. Yep. Okay, undercarriage down and locked. Hopefully you see the wheels. Fixture we haven't got. Fuel we have is on and sufficient. The fuel is the little wire thing on the end of a cork. The uh, tank on the front. Drop we don't need to worry about. I instruments, well, all the instruments are good. T's and P's are good. Hatches and harnesses are good. Round the corner to the left, we can go car peak cold. Be cold. Um, round we go left. Is that the runway? Yeah, yeah, I've got the runway. We're on approach to land. What is the process for landing one of these things? OK, so the final stages of the approach, we're going to come over the hedge at a particular speed, carrying a little bit of power. Uh, we want to round out possibly just a little bit higher than you would normally, uh, being an experienced flyer. Um, so a little bit higher than normal. Um, and try and fly the aeroplane parallel with the ground. Once we're established in that parallel flight, we're going to very gently close the throttle. And then we're going to sense the aeroplane begin to sink. And the idea is we're going to try and find that magic three-point attitude, which is the attitude where when we touch down, 
both the main wheels and the tail wheel make contact with the ground at the same time. So car heat hot. Okay, we can leave that there now. Just like a normal aeroplane now, so 80, not, 80 miles an hour is okay on the approach to start. Nobody on finals. Golf Charlie November turning final. Golf Charlie November, Roger, surface wind 2107. Golf Charlie November. So the wind is slightly off, the, off to the left. Right, slightly off to the left. That's it. So let's get the speed sorted out. Don't forget the trimmer is your friend. Probably need quite a lot of trim. You're seven up here. Yeah. yeah. So anti clockwise this way. That's it. So 70 is what we're after for the moment. Just to come down over the trees. So a little bit of pump. That's it. Good. And try and relax. Okay. So that's it. A little bit of uh, turbulence over the trees. That's fine. There, bring the power back a little bit now. Okay, leave the power there. Let it come down. Let's go radio go. Let it come down. Okay, round out. Ten miles power to the east. Two thousand two hundred. And hold the nose attitude up. Build information, please. Up, inbound. Nose up. Hold it there. Oh. Nose up. Nose up. Oh, hold it there. Hold well, it there. Done, there you go. Right and stick right back. Circuit. Now, that three-point attitude is going to take a bit of getting used to. I'm on the ground, but to keep straight in a tailwheel in the rollout requires a particular type of rudder technique. If it does start to veer off one side or the other, then we need to stab the rudder. We don't need to push it in and leave it in because that will result in transiting across into the other direction almost straight away. So it's a stab of the rudder and back to neutral again. And if that doesn't have the desired effect, we can stab it, hold it for slightly longer, but then back to neutral once again. And if all else fails and we have got full rudder in and nothing's happening, then we can also apply some brake as well. But that really is a last resort. So it's a little tiny skip and a jump, mainly because again, you know, we just touched down very, very slightly main wheels first. So it's just that getting practice at that attitude. Off we go again then. So a bit of throttle to start with. Try and keep straight as best you can. That's it. Now the rest of the power. Stick back. Okay, good. Now stick forwards. Off you go. Forward some more. That's it. You've got your feet on the brakes again. Oh my god, it's difficult. Yeah. Really difficult. Okay, she wants to fly, let's get in the air. Foxtrot overhead. That's it. Foxtrot right here. Having flown nose wheel aeroplanes exclusively for nearly 500 hours now, trying to take off and land this tail dragger reminds me of circuit bashing for my PPL and feeling despondent at being unable to master the skill. But Nigel assures me it's just a case of practice. And sure enough, the second landing wasn't so bad. Okay, try and keep in the middle of the grass runway. That's it. That's it, leave the power there now. Oh my god. All right, round out, round out. Now take the power off. Don't let it land. Don't let it land. Don't let it land. Very nice. Now keep straight. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> That's good fun, actually. This is oh my god business. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm running a special prize promotion for my supporters club and Patreon members. I'm giving my paying supporters the chance to win a flight in Anglian Warbirds T6 Harvard. This 60 minute experience involves a 30 minute briefing and at least 20 minutes in the air. Members who are signed up to either my £1, £2 or £3.50 a month memberships on Friday the 11th of December 2020 will be entered into the draw. I will be picking a winner at random live on YouTube on Saturday the 12th of December. For full details and terms and conditions visit my website. The link is in the video description. Next, Nigel demonstrates a wheeler landing. Some people think wheeler landings are better in crosswind conditions. The idea is as we fly the aeroplane onto the ground on the main wheels by themselves and then we let the tail settle of its own accord. So car feet hot again. Oh. So normally the approach for a wheeler landing is just a little bit quicker because I've been teaching you a 70 mile an hour approach anyway. That's what we're going to stick to. We don't really want it any faster than that. 
and then it's nice what you'll see is what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try to feel for the ground and when we level when we've rounded out I'm going to let it sink and just gently feel for the ground Golf Charlie November final Golf Charlie November Roger surface wind one eight zero degrees one zero knots Golf Charlie November Right, okay. Of course, there's no guarantees I'm going to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so, follow me through like you normally do. That's it. Get a sink over the tree. Right, so what we do is we come down. Now we round down. And now what we're trying to do is gently feel for the ground. And when we do, just ease the stick forward slightly. So it's power off, progressively putting the stick further and further forward while we're slowing down. No brakes. OK. There's the tail on the ground there. Then the stick goes straight back. In future episodes, I'll be made to try the wheeler. But we ended our session today with one final three-point landing. And Nigel was going to say nothing this time. OK. All yours. Going to shut up. Oh, all right. <laughs> remember how to do it. I'm sure you will. Sorry. Oh god. That's it. Power off. Very nice. Perfect. Look at that. Look. That was very nice. See? You don't need me anymore. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Managing to perform a nice landing there with minimum input has left me on a high. A good time to end the day and reflect on what I can do better next time. How was that? Pretty good. You're right. Yeah, that was that was exciting. Like learning to fly all over again. <laughs> Super. Okay. Right, you get right, out first. I'll get out first. Here comes the awkward bit. So, how oh, were okay. my landings? Do you think? No, oh, pretty good. For a tail dragger beginner. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad what, at all. What do I need? What What do I need to do better? Practice. That's all that it is. Just really? practice and experience. Yeah. Oh. So. Obviously, getting used to those pedals being, being you know, heel brakes as opposed to toe brakes was yeah. quite tricky, especially on the te first takeoff. Yeah. Finding the, the position of my toes without having the brakes on, that was quite fiddly. Um, and coming down into that attitude, it's, it's interesting because you kind of come down and then uh, round out. And the plane actually quite nicely just wants to settle down. It does down, just sink it? in the in yeah. the right place. Once you find the attitude, it, it, it it's it's happy spot. Yeah. It's great to be learning again, even if I do feel like I've gone back to square one. Next time, I'll land the tail wheel on a very narrow hard runway, and try those wheeler landings for myself. Fly safely, my friends. <laughs>